The first free AI tool you need to know about is goblin.tools. Here you've got a magic to-do list. Now, how often do you just feel overwhelmed with the big task that you need to do? This is an AI tool that allows you to break down that task into manageable chunks, and I've tested it for science, and I'm pretty impressed with what it can do. So here, for example, I've put in complete a PhD, and once you click a button over here, you get all of these things, and you can change the the level of spiciness, i.e. how much it breaks it down, from like simple all the way to a lot. And so I put it all the way to a lot and I asked it about completing a PhD. And here you can see it's actually done a pretty good job at breaking up all of the different tasks. Another thing I tried was trying to get it to do specific stuff for science. So my field was organic photovoltaic devices and particularly nanomaterials. So I said, how about testing new nanomaterials for solar cells? So here you can see I sort of like changed it down to medium and it says research and select nanomaterials, prepare samples of the selected nanomaterials. All of that stuff is actually just a really nice way of kind of breaking through those mental blocks that you've got. So let's see it in action. So here I've got Test new organic photovoltaic devices. Let's change the spiciness up a little bit and then add it to my list. Here you can see it's added it down to the bottom and all I have to do is say break down item. So I click there, it says working. We've got a little bit of an animation. It's quite quick and what you'll find is that you get this breakdown. So over here, research and gather information about organic photovoltaic devices, identify objectives, develop a testing plan, set up the testing environment, prepare the organic photovoltaic device, Devices, blah, blah, blah. So overall, it does provide you with an excellent breakdown of even very specific stuff for your research. So if you feel overwhelmed, this AI tool is completely free and I think it will help you make those first steps if you don't know what to do first. The second tool you should know about is Tome. Tome.app is the actual um, website and it's all about creating awesome narratives and presentations for your work. There's a little trick that I want you to see as well. So here you go to create and if you go to create, you come up with this very sort of like basic uh, interface and all, I, all you have to do is say, I wanna create a presentation about transparent electrodes, new materials. Let's see what it does with that. That's probably not a very good prompt, but it generates an outline first. Here it says, the future is clear. Oh, I like it. I like it. The future is clear, exploring the latest materials for transparent electrodes. So it, it knows the brief, that's fantastic. It's got current materials, new materials, uh, challenges and future outlook. So it's done not such a bad job. Here you can add or remove certain things. Uh, you can also sort of like adjust them. So there is a way to personalize. If we hit continue, what you can see, it will produce a very, very kind of quick, basic outline of a presentation, but it doesn't do such a bad job. I'll be honest with you. You know, all of these things are just starting points. They're not where you finish, but if you can just put something like this in, if you have to give a short presentation, presentation. This is a really great way of doing that, just taking all of the guesswork out of those initial steps. So introduction, welcome ladies and gentlemen to this exciting presentation. Okay, it's a too much text, too much text, but you can see it gives you that outline. Here we've got current materials, indium tin oxide, fluorine dope tin oxide, great, ITO is known to be toxic, and okay, yeah, okay, and difficult to recycle, therefore, blah, blah, blah. So we've got graphene, we've got carbon nanotubes, and we've also got challenges and future outlook. That is a very large slide. That is not very good for an actual presentation. Neither is this conclusion. But the one thing I like about it is, look, it gives you the structure and outline. It can actually give you some really nice um, sort of, uh, oh, I don't like that best. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that dude's face. He has been a postdoc for far too long. Oh, that's terrible. Just doing this isn't the only way it works. So if I go to create, I've, it's got this beta version at the moment where it says document to presentation. So if you click that, you can paste text from a document. Now this is brilliant if you've got some results that you need to show to your supervisor, to your group or whatever, so you can just reuse what you've already done and turn it into a presentation. I've tried it with my papers, so here I've got the accurate thickness measurement of graphene. Let's just put this abstract in and let's see if we can uh, create a little presentation. Quite often in research groups you have to do like paper presentations of papers you've just read recently that you think would be interesting for the group. This is a great way 
way of just quickly creating that. So I can generate, it's generating presentation from document and all I have to do now is wait. Okay, here it says, presentation created, let's keep it and let's see what it's done. So here we've got an outline characterization techniques, challenges with AFM, P-Force tapping mode, blah, blah, blah. So here we've got characterization techniques of graphene films. Um, we've got challenges with AFM, which is with the main point of the paper. Then it's got peak force tapping mode, and then it says improved accuracy, and then it's got important factors. So it's done an okay job, and you can see that if you've got a number of different papers, you could potentially put all of their abstracts in and create a little kind of like flow of all of the information that you've gathered about a certain topic. So uh, it can be pretty useful. Now this is a pretty boring slide at the moment, but all I have to do is say, I want to include an image and here we can create an image as well. So I want to describe the image, this is graphene. So let's just say, I want a nice graphene image and let's say a generate, and then it will pop up and it will show you here all of the options and I can then just click on the one that I like. Look at all of those <laughs> AI, come on now, let's maybe try this one. There's a dude stepping on it with a really weird fence. Okay, that was not good either. Let's try this one, that's not graphene either. Okay, it doesn't know what graphene is. Okay, overall, medium. I don't like the images. But I got a solution for that coming up. Another tool you should know about is Parrot.ai. Parrot.ai is a meeting organizer, summarizer that's uh, sort of like driven by AI. Now here's the thing, is that when you have a meeting with your supervisor, with other people, sometimes all of the information can get lost because there is so much of it, there's different ideas. And also one of the things that I found while I was doing my PhD and my postdocs is that supervisors literally do not remember what they've said from one meeting to the next. You end up just repeating yourself, they end up contradicting themselves. All of that can be captured on a simple meeting tool like Parrot.ai. So one thing I would have loved to have done throughout my PhD is use my smartphone, put it in front of me and the supervisor on record and just record that audio. It's more sort of like uh, friendly than having a camera in your face. But essentially then you can take that audio and you can drag and drop it in here, which is the upload recordings. You upload the recording and what happens is Parrot AI will take that information and summarize it using AI. They will uh, come up with the key tasks and also importantly it is a record of all of the things both of you have said so that if there's any dispute in the future you can go to this and say well actually this is what we agreed this is what we didn't agree this is what you said last time and I think it's just a great accountability sort of uh, tool for both you and your supervisor and it's super easy um, it's got a really sort of generous free plan and so consider using parrot.ai for your meetings to capture all of the information that's just sort of like blasted into your face from your supervisor. It can be really hard to keep up by just writing alone. So a simple phone recording and then a tool like Para AI can help you. The last tool I think you should know about, which is completely free, which blows my mind, is Bing's Image Creator. So there are loads of reasons why you would need images as part of your research, particularly for presentations, particularly for talking about your uh, research in a public forum. Having great visual and uh, striking images can really help you spread your message. So using Microsoft Bing's um, image creator, which is powered by Dal E. Um, here we can just sort of like, okay, let's say I want um, a solar cell um, schematic with sun. All right, so here are the options it's given me. So I particularly like this one because it shows that there's a sun and the solar cells do actually look like solar cells. So here we could use that on a presentation. We could use this um, as a social media kind of um, image if we are looking to promote our latest paper, promote our thesis, promote our work to the broader uh, world you can use these striking images and you can see here that I've tried it with all sorts of things. I had solar cell here. This was um, sun rising behind a solar cell. So great images there. This was my cells. I wanted to see what it thought about my cells. So a schematic of a my cell, um, which was, uh, you know, 
a surfactant stabilized oil droplet in water is really what I was going for. So not really quite what I wanted, but that's because the prompt was probably bad. Here we tried solar cell again, and here I tried solar cell again before. So you can see it will take a little bit of trial and error to find the perfect image for what you need it to do. But ultimately you can get there with the right prompt. And this is a great way of really making your research visual and striking and it's for free. So there we have it. There are the AI research tools that I think will really help you during your PhD or your research. So let me know in the comments which ones you would add. And also remember to go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've also got the uh, resource pack over there, the forum and blog. It's all there to make sure that your PhD works for you. And also remember to sign up to my newsletter. It's completely free. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Every everything from the tools I've used, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free. So don't miss out, go sign up now and I'll see you in the next video.